let's, I guess, start from the beginning. I, I don't know that when it comes to uh, Ukrainian military flipping the tables on Putin and uh, making their march on Russian territory, I don't know that anybody really had that on their 2024 bingo cards. So let's start from, from that point. Uh, to what degree was that incursion into Russian territory expected? And more importantly, from your perspective, what does it mean? What's the overall objective? Yeah, absolutely. It was a partial surprise. Um, in terms of the geography to go into Russia itself, that was unexpected. However, in terms of the timing, we actually were forecasting that the Ukrainian lines would have solidified a little bit better by late 2024, 2025. And we published a report um, back in mid-2024 that the Ukrainians uh, would likely be in a better position and they might even conduct some limited operations, offensive operations, in late 24, early 25. So the timing tracks, um, but the geography is unique and different. Um, and that's interesting, I think. Uh, I don't want to speculate on the Ukrainians' objective because uh, no one really knows unless you're in the Ukrainian high command. I mean, they, they didn't tell Washington about this operation ahead of time either. Mm -hmm. uh, but the campaign is causing a series of dilemmas for the, the Kremlin. And, and I think we can have a very interesting debate or, or, or series of questions to ask, what is the primary objective? What's the secondary or tertiary one? But there's a series of effects that are being uh, created by this offensive. And I'll, I'll briefly lay out what those are. Number one, uh, this offensive is drastically uh, challenging Putin's strategic planning assumptions about what it takes to wage a protracted war against Ukraine. If you look at the map, the international border between uh, the northeastern part of Ukraine and Russia, there's about uh, a thousand kilometers of territory there. And we know that over the last two and a half years, Putin has made a decision to not defend that international border. He has availed himself to uh, Western policies that assumed that the Western states would not allow Ukraine to go on the offensive and use Western provided kit in or against Russia. And, and Putin therefore did not adequately protect the border regions. Now with this uh, protracted uh, Ukrainian incursion, this is gonna force a decision point on the Kremlin. Will Putin moving forward actually invest uh, substantial resources, including deploying uh, several divisions, I mean, tens of thousands of Russian soldiers that will now have to cover an additional thousand kilometers of border in the theater, or will Putin not? If he chooses to actually invest in defending the border, then that drastically increases the resourcing requirements indefinitely to actually be able to protract the war. And that will decrease the resources available to actually fight the war inside of occupied Ukraine. Um, even if the Russians swing around, eventually push the Ukrainians out, if they do indeed cover that additional border, that would be a win in my book for the Ukrainians. Um, other effects that this is generating for, for the Ukrainians, which are good. Uh, this is gumming up the entire Russian uh, high operational and strategic level planning for the whole campaign. Uh, we know that the Russians over the last eight, nine months, they've been the beneficiaries of having the initiative across the entire theater. That is, they get to choose when, where, the tempo of operations, um, and essentially how to serve up in different parts of the theater, a bunch of dilemmas for the Ukrainians for how to respond. Now with the Ukrainians flipping, the, uh, flipping the, the script, the Russians are on the back foot in at least the north, and now the Russians are stripping parts of the line, not everywhere, but parts of the line, and redeploying units to go respond to Kursk. Now, I think it's a little too early to see exactly how that's going to affect the tempo of operations, as you noted at the introduction, the Russians are actually doubling down on their offensive efforts in the east. Um, but this is substantial and it's changing the way that the Russians wanted to fight this war. Finally, um, it's a political dilemma for Putin. You know, Putin spent the last two decades trying to rebuild the prestige of Russia, uh, present Russia as a country of stability, of recovery, of resurging geopolitical preeminence. And I think Putin's chosen response to this incursion was very interesting. He channeled a little bit of uh, his inner Stalin. He did not respond for three or four days after the incursion began. He very interestingly did not use this as an opportunity to declare war against Ukraine or to declare martial law. And he didn't even create a, a military headquarters to deal with this invasion. He instead said this is gonna be a counter-terrorist operation that the Russian domestic police, the Russian uh, Federal Security Service, the FSB are going to handle. And now that with this FSB joint headquarters that he's standing up, it has to deal with a variety of different uh, security agencies and military units and try to cobble together what 
you know, looks to be a very unorthodox and, and uh, very sketchy uh, joint, uh, you know, headquarters, which I'm, I'm personally skeptical of its ability to effectively deal with uh, you know, the first time that mechanized combined arms forces mm -hmm. operated on Russian soil since the 1940s. Yeah, why do you think he's reacted the way he did? Right. Because, I mean, oftentimes Putin loves nothing more than to have a bogeyman, right, to, to point, you know, and, and to whip up the nationalist frenzy and say we're being attacked from the outside. And, you know, it's, it's all whoever, the U.S.'s fault, the EU's fault. Uh, why is he having this limited, I, I don't know if that's the right word for it, response um, and not beating the drum more in terms of saying, you know, we're at war, look at this, you know, they're invading us. Yeah, I mean, I was expecting Putin to use this as the opportunity to say, my fellow Russians, this is the time that I've been warning you about for decades. This is the NATO backed effort to like like Napoleon did and like the Germans did in World War II to, to dismantle the Russian Federation. And now we must defend the motherland. But he didn't. Um, I think it's actually because the, the popular myth about Putin being the master, the tactical mastermind and the shrewd gambler. I think those are not true. In fact, we have a lot of counterfactual evidence over the last two and a half years of war that demonstrates that at the strategic level, Putin is very, very calculating, but he's extremely cautious and he's unwilling to actually uh, undertake risky decisions that are going to risk his political uh, stability, domestic stability at home. You know, Russian leaders, they typically change either due to palace coups or due to large scale revolution from the from the ground up. And um, Putin is very comfortable, I think, about his Powell situation. He's shored that up with, you know, removing Yevgeny uh, Prigozhin actually on this day last year. Um, however, he doesn't want to call general war. He doesn't want to conduct general mobilization. In his response to this incursion, he didn't dignify the Ukrainian brigades rolling around in Russia as regular legitimate military combatants. He said that they were terrorists. We are going to conduct a counter-terrorist mm -hmm. operation. And so... It seems like in his effort to try to downplay the severity and the embarrassment and his mistakes and not adequately protecting the border, um, he's trying to essentially do damage control, a message to the Russian you know, population, not to worry. This isn't as embarrassing as it is. It's not a big deal. It's just a minor border incursion. The local police are going to take care of it. And interestingly, he did not uh, signal that he wants to conduct a new wave of mobilization. He, in fact, said that the number of volunteer recruits who have come forward to uh, participate and in this counter operation and you know, answer the call of duty uh, is very high. And that's his tacit way of communicating to the Russian people. I'm not interested in. Don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to violate another aspect of our social contract. 